Hi, this is Dr. Brian Walsh with FatIsNotYourFault.com. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about how insulin works and where some of the breakdown with insulin can occur so that something like insulin resistance can take place. So here's how insulin works. Insulin is produced by your pancreas to help lower your blood sugar. Insulin is considered to be a peptide hormone, which means it's a protein, and protein hormones cannot get directly across the membrane into the cell. So it needs a receptor. And here we have an insulin receptor. So here's a little bit about how insulin works in getting glucose into the cell. Let's say you just had a meal, and you have an excess amount of glucose, which are the red circles here, in your bloodstream. Glucose needs to get into the cell. One is to help the production of ATP, uh, which is energy, and two is possibly to be stored as gl uh, glycogen or as triglycerides in fat tissue. But to get glucose in, you need insulin's help. And to have insulin work, it needs to be able to bind onto the receptors and work correctly. So let's talk a little bit about how this works. Now this is an overly simplified view, but it should give you some understanding of exactly what happens inside a cell when insulin uh, is stimulated and helps get glucose inside the cell, again, for energy production or for storage. So inside the cell, you have a, a few things. And again, this is overly simplified. There's far more that goes on with insulin than this. You have these vesicles inside called GLUT4 vesicles or GLUT4 vesicles. Now what you notice, it's a vesicle that has what are really little tubes associated with it. Or you could just picture miniature straws, for example. So you have these GLUT4 vesicles with these tubes associated with it inside the cell. These tubes are glucose tubes, meaning that if we can get these tubes to the surface, now glucose can get into the cell. Normally, glucose can't get in because these GLUT4 vesicles are on the inside. So here's basically what happens. So your pancreas releases insulin, and insulin, again, is too large, and it's a protein to get inside the cell. So what it does is it has to bind onto a receptor. Now, when it binds onto the receptor, there is an otherwise dormant protein, if you will, that's on the other side of this receptor. So it's almost as if insulin knocks on the door of this receptor, and then the dormant protein on the other side wakes up. And when this protein on the other side wakes up, there's a whole series and cascade of proteins and enzymes that are involved. But ultimately what ends up happening is this now second messenger on the inside of the cell stimulates these GLUT4 vesicles to move towards the membrane. And when they do, they open up and they flatten and they penetrate the cell membrane with their glucose tubes. Now, these glucose tubes are associated in the membrane wall, and this allows glucose to get into the cell from the bloodstream. And again, once inside, it can be utilized for immediate energy and ATP production, or it can be stored in the form of glycogen, or adipose tissue or triglycerides for later use if necessary. Now, the other GLUT4 vesicle in here I drew, because there are insulin-induced GLUT4 vesicles, there are also exercise-induced GLUT4 vesicles. And this is one of the many reasons why exercise is so critically important today. To help manage blood sugar, all you need to do, or one of the things, is to exercise. And if you exercise, these GLUT4 vesicles can go to the surface, can puncture the membrane with their glucose tubes, and bring glucose in without insulin needed. Okay? So yes, you need healthy insulin, you need healthy receptors, but also exercise is a critical, comp critical comportant, uh, component of blood sugar management. Now, knowing this, where can issues arise? Well, first of all, let's say the pancreas is not making insulin. If it doesn't make insulin, the receptor is not stimulated, the dormant protein on the inside of the cell is not stimulated, and the GLUT4 vesicle stays inside the cell, and you have elevated glucose outside the bloodstream. And by the way, glucose is toxic. This is one of the major issues with diabetics today, and the reason why they have things like nephropathies and retinopathies and neuropathies and the nerves, kidneys, and eyes, because glucose in high do levels in your bloodstream is toxic to your body. You want to get it into the cell as energy or as storage so that it doesn't cause damage in your body. If your body's not making insulin, then you can't get glucose in. Let's say your body is making adequate amounts of insulin, but the receptors are not working well. This is commonly referred to as insulin resistance, that you're, you do have insulin, but your body and your cells are resistant to it. It doesn't work because the receptors aren't working adequately. If the receptors aren't working, you can have all the insulin you want, but it's not going to stimulate this whole cascade of events bringing glucose in. And the third area of possible defect, which is, is far too complex to really talk about here, is the machinery inside the cell itself. You might have normal and healthy amounts of insulin, 
healthy receptors, but for some reason, if the machinery inside the cell is not working correctly, then again, glucose won't get in, and glucose ends up being toxic to your body. So there's a little primer on insulin, insulin resistance, and how this whole process works. I hope you found this helpful, and have a wonderful day.